Uh, yeah, it's very exciting. Um, yeah, it's it's been a long build up. I think six hundred and something seventy odd days since I've last played for the Scorchers. So um, yeah, to to have the season start with a big bash last night was pretty exciting. Watching it, and I can't wait to get out there now. When, when do you reckon the last time was that you played with Jai Richardson and, and Berendorf? Well, I think Dorf's last game was my last game. So it would have been probably 679 days ago, I think it is. Mm -hmm. so it would have been the last game of the 2019 season, 1819. And how pumped are you to, to play with those two guys again? I guess all the fans are excited to see you three all, all together and, and throwing it down. Yeah, I, I think it'll be excellent. You know, we've, um, you know, each one of us is, is differently skilled um, and very skilled at that. So, Hopefully, yeah, we can work together well and, and really sort of restrict the other team amid these new rules and the power surges and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can uh, come together and, and put on a good performance for our fans. In terms of just pure talent, where do you think your, your team ranks in terms of a pace attack? Um, I think it would have to be up there. Uh, you know, myself, Dolph, Jai, um, yeah, you know, it's pretty pretty formidable three. Then you got forward Ahmed. Um, all four of us have played uh, international cricket for our country. Um, you got likes of maybe Aaron Hardy, um, Matt Kelly, Cam Gannon. You know, we we got Joel Paris who's played for the country as well. So we got plenty uh, plenty of stocks there in the way of bowlers. So um, that's not even mentioning Mitch when he he's able to get ready to bowl or, or where his ankle is at. I'm not too sure, but um, yeah, you know, it's, it's a very exciting list for us this year. And then just, I've read that you've probably put on 10 kilometers an hour with your, your bowling pace. Can you just talk us through that? How could you put on so much in such a short space of time, I guess? Um, yeah, I, I'd probably say it's probably more consistently about about five or six kilometers an hour, but yeah, I did, uh, did give the pace gun a little nudge the other night up in uh, Sydney. so. Um, I think just some, a few little tweaks and a bit of adrenaline and being fresh for a change, it's, um, it's amazing what it can do. And yeah, I think the, uh, it's more the, the benefits of, of changing my action to, to create that extra pace. It, it's really helped me. So how fast are you getting it at now? Uh, I tipped just under 145 k's an hour and, you know, I was, uh, I was actually only chatting to Mitchell Johnson earlier, just trying to jive him that I was uh, quicker, quicker than he is, but he wasn't having any of it and we we're just joking around. Yeah, <laughs> but that's seriously pretty quick, you know, that is starting to get into the territory of, of those absolute speedsters. Uh, yeah, um, I, I still don't think I'm in the realms of, of those absolute speedsters, but it's nice to feel like the ball's coming out uh, and, and surprising a few batsmen. And just one on Mitch Marsh, where's he at, at the moment? Is he going to play tomorrow night? Uh, I think he's in the mix. Um, I haven't haven't been given the final word or the final squad yet. So, um, you know, he, he's been at training the last couple of days, batting um, fairly unrestricted. So, yeah, whether or not he plays or not, I'm still not sure. But, yeah, I think he, he'd definitely be, be a chance to. Cool. Thanks for that. I'll handball that to someone else. Awesome. Thanks, Chatters. Uh, Lockie Reid. Hey, Jay. Uh, just going back to your speed, I mean, we all know you as such a consistent bowler. Did you feel like you had to get a little quicker? Or what's the reason for, for getting quicker? Oh, probably the last big bash I played, I, I felt like I'd probably lost a little bit of my zip. And you know, when I when I was bowling a lot close to that 140 mark, it then made my slow bowls a lot more effective because the batsman couldn't just sort of sit on my slow balls and uh, adjust to my slightly quicker ones, which were probably at that stage around 130 to 135. Um, so now that I'm sort of pushing that speed going up a bit, then they have to be able to be ready for my my normal pace or my stock bowl. Um, and then they have to adjust to my slow ball. So in terms of it, it's something that I'd identified that needed to sort of happen to get my effectiveness back with uh, within T20 cricket. And, and that ball that we all know you do so well, so you think you could be a little more effective because of the change of pace that you've got? Uh, I feel so. Personally, I feel that I, it, it helps me. Um, you know, anyone that's got a bit of pace and batsman has to be on their toes with uh, it, it, 
it can cause troubles. Um, it can go the other way against you and batsmen are able to use the, uh, the pace a lot more and, and you go a lot further. But um, I think for me, just be able to have that batsman where I'm able to bowl a little bit sharper or um, hurry them up a bit, then, yeah, I think it will prove to be a bit more effective for me. And just like... Last one for me. Um, a lot have been uh, tipping the Scorchers to win the whole lot. Do you guys embrace uh, the, well, I suppose, favouritism tag? Do you, do you embrace that and take it on? Um, well, I don't know. It's uh, it's one of those things. We know we've got a good list and we're excited and you always go into the competition wanting to win it. So if they want to label us as favourites, that's great. If you want to label us as underdogs, even better. Um yeah, we'll we'll happily take on anything because we're going out there every game to win, uh, win it and and come home with that trophy. So um, hopefully the boys can sort of yeah deliver and and put some, put on some good shows. Thanks, mate. Cool. Thanks, Lockie. Uh, over to you, Tom. AJ, um, what what do you make of the new rules, um, especially the substitution rule uh, that you know can some bowler or batter out if they haven't batted or bowled yet. Have you guys talked about how you're going to use that yeah, in games or is it kind of a, a, a fill it out as the game's going on? I think it's a, a fill it out as the game's going on kind of situation. I, I can't, personally, I can't see many teams using that rule. Um, I'm not sure. I'm still a bit unclear. From when we first got told about it, you're allowed to have bowled one over, I reckon. Um, so I don't know if they've completely cut that down to zero or if you can still bowl one over and then get subbed out. Um, I'll have to check that before tomorrow's game. But yeah, if if you're picking your best eleven to start with, um, unless something majorly goes wrong or something dramatic happens in the first ten overs, maybe if there's an injury, um, I could see it happening. But you know, if if someone is in your best eleven, I can't see it changing too much. So I'm not sure how much use that uh, that rule will get. Um, but who knows? Uh, just back on what Lockie was saying with being favourites, the last two seasons have been really disappointing for the Scorchers. Um, does how much of the how much of a motivation is that um, to sort of at least get back into finals, if not push for for a, for a title this year? Yeah, definitely. You know, it has been underwhelming. Um, I know personally, my last tournament I played in wasn't a, as good as I would have liked it to be, um, and you know that that's what we do if we come into these comps to win it. So if we're not making finals, it is very underwhelming. So we'll definitely be using the motivation the last couple of years to turn it around and, and get back into making finals. Um, you know, it's it's very strange the last two years that we haven't made finals because we'd made finals every year until then. So um, we want to get back to that and we want to put uh, that sort of fear in the teams that Perth Scorchers don't miss the finals and are the best comp team in the comp. So. Um, we'll definitely be going out there to try and sort of, yeah, make those finals and turn the last couple of years on its head. You've only got the uh, four games at Optus this year. Uh, how important will they be in, in how you guys finish up the season? Um, yeah, obviously it's three less than we would like to have. Um, but, yeah, uh, it, it's a different year this year. Uh, a lot of teams are playing in different states, in neutral venues, um, so I think it, it's all going to come down to who plays the conditions best on the day um, away from home. And then, yeah, hopefully when we come home and we can really sort of use that to our advantage um, and, and make sure those four games are wins. Um, I think if we come away with all four of them winning, we're in good stead for the, the rest of the comp. Brilliant. Thanks, mate. Cool. Thanks, Tom. Jake, do you want to jump in? Nope. Any, uh, any other questions? Oh, for... Here he is. Oh. Yeah, go, Jack. I saw you on All right, boys. Have you got me there? We're on a weirdo system in the newsroom here. Um, just one quick on Adj. I know there's been a, a bit of movement with um, staff due to COVID. Has, has the preparation been different leading into the summer and particularly the Big Bash? What what changes have been there for you guys? Um, personally, yeah, my, my preparation has been completely different. I haven't been home for... <laughs> For four months, I haven't set foot in Perth since August. So, um, you know, catching up with the boys over the last couple of days, it feels a bit weird when you're just coming into the mix two days out from the first game. Um, 
and you know we've we've had a bit of a disruption with the boys at home having to go into to quarantine after the shield hub um that probably provided a bit of a, a nuisance and and delayed the progress or the the preparedness that they would love to have had um but from all reports the boys have been smacking training back home a um, couple of couple of practice games one at murdoch one at the wacker um and yeah they're, they're as ready and rearing to go as they can be